Last year at the Dresden Bilderberg, we managed to catch some Bilderbergers during a group tour at the Dresden Opera House. They see me rolling, they hate at this rare opportunity, we saw Bilderbergers do what they do best in their natural habitat, networking. While this elite group enjoyed the view of Dresden, we were carefully monitored by a heavily armed special police unit. We decided to select Bilderbergers from this unique footage because they also participate in this year's Bilderberg. Let's start with Ulrik Federspiel, who had held senior Danish government positions for almost 20 years. He was a Bilderberg steering committee member and participated in Bilderberg the past 16 years. Federspiel is an executive at Haldor Topse a company known for promoting the use of methanol in fracking. Federspiel is having a chat here with fellow Dane Thomas Arenkiel, director of the Danish Defense Intelligence Service. This year Federspiel is at Bilderberg with Jakob Haldor Topso, chairman of Haldor Topso. Nicolas Bavarez is a partner in the Paris office of Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher. He has years of experience in representing and assisting the French state. He represented the French and British rail companies in the ongoing arbitration against Eurotunnel. Bavarez specializes in privatization. He takes utilities that were paid for by the taxpayer and hands them over to the billionaires, who then charge those taxpayers with tolls and fees. Don't Bilderbergers just love privatization? No, it's not Christopher Walken. It's Marcus Agius, a British financier and former group chairman of Barclays. His career is not free of scandals either. Agius resigned from Barclays in 2012 as a result of the massive global financial fraud. Yes, we're talking LIBOR again. Despite the resulting scandals for Agius and others, which forced resignations in 2012, he stayed on the bank's payroll as an advisor. In September 2011, Agius was appointed as a committee member to act as one of the three current trustees of the Bilderberg Group. Agius is married to the daughter of Edmund de Rothschild, bringing him into the family of one of the most prestigious and influential financial dynasties in the world. Eric Schmidt is the executive chairman of Alphabet, also known as Google. In 2016, his estimated wealth was over $10 billion. Schmidt is also a former Apple board member, former Stanford Business School professor and a pretty kick-ass programmer. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal, he claims, I actually think most people don't want Google to answer their questions. They want Google to tell them what they should be doing next. Google is the closest thing to an all-knowing entity in existence. Schmidt wants to create God, and he seems to be quite successful at it. At the same time, he runs a repulsive company with an appetite for tax avoidance, alleged misuse and manipulation of search results, censorship of content, violating people's privacy, and intellectual property. Eric Schmidt and other representatives of high-tech companies like DeepMind can be called the new super elite. They are more intelligent but also more powerful than the old elite. Together with the traditional dynasties like Wallenberg, Rockefeller and Rothschild, they maintain all the power aiming for world domination. 